By 1879, after 15 long years of intimidation, force, and strong arm tactics, the Standard Oil Company controlled an incredible 90% of all refinery operations in the United States. But Rockefeller's overwhelming power caused some Americans to fear that the free enterprise system was in danger. Without competition, there was no force that could check what Standard could do to prices if it so chose. It's looked upon as uh, the monopoly, the, the evil trust, and it's looked upon at this point in what it begins to be known as the American Progressive Era as the antithesis of what America should be. Criticism of Rockefeller reached unprecedented levels. His enemies proclaimed that Standard Oil was legally chartered only in Ohio and that under the laws of the time, the company had no right to own refineries or warehouses in other states. Moving quickly to protect himself, Rockefeller came up with a brilliant plan. In 1882, he organized the Standard Oil Trust. The trust is a legal form of business organization. And in the latter part of the 19th century, it was the mechanism by which monopolies were created. What Rockefeller did with all of his oil companies, he, uh, in a sense, folded them into the standard trust that en ended up owning all of the shares of these companies. Rockefeller could control all of these and operate as a monopoly. With his refining and distribution interests protected by the trust, Rockefeller set his sights on production. A golden opportunity soon presented itself. In the late 1880s, the Pennsylvania oil fields began to dry up. The center of the nation's oil production shifted west to newly discovered sources in Ohio and Indiana. The trust began buying up all the petroleum-rich properties it could get its hands on. By 1891, despite the fact that it had owned virtually no oil fields just a decade before, Standard now produced over 25% of the nation's total output of crude and refined nearly 90%. The nation was totally dependent on kerosene for light, and Standard controlled virtually every drop. It was simple supply and demand, and Rockefeller, for all intents and purposes, was the only supplier. Standard Oil seemed unstoppable. But on November 1st, 1879, the U.S. Patent Office awarded patent number 223898 to Thomas Edison. It was for the electric lamp. Edison found that his lighting system would be so cheap that only the wealthy could afford to burn candles. But of course, it was not the candle makers who had the most reason to be concerned. The light bulb took the country by storm and put the entire oil industry at risk. Thomas Edison was just not an inventor, a scientist. He realized very quickly the commercial uh, interest his invention would create. He priced his electricity to be competitive with oil. By 1892, an oil man, if he could sell a gallon of oil for two cents, he was considered pretty lucky. As the 19th century came to a close, oil men feared for their future. But another invention soon appeared that filled them not with dread, but with hope. Henry Ford's automobile ran on an internal combustion engine powered by gasoline, a derivative of petroleum. 
about the same uh, time frame that uh, most American homes were beginning to be uh, electrified, uh, the, the horseless carriage came along, the development of the internal combustion engine, and then the mass marketing of those so that every home could have an automobile, and they were all powered by gasoline. So one door opens when one door closes. The automobile had saved Rockefeller's industry from oblivion. But another threat to the Rockefeller empire was emerging as the 20th century began. A new oil-producing region of the country being developed by a rough and tumble breed of men far removed from the eastern establishment of John Rockefeller and Standard Oil. They were called wildcatters. <laughs> 